After the success of Stiff's 650B wheeled hardtail the Morph, Stiff has answered the call to bring all of that Morph goodness to a big wheel platform, introducing the Stiff Squatch. The Stiff Squatch is an aggressive steel framed hardtail that rolls on 29 inch wheels. Hi, I'm Liam from Offroad TC, and this is the review of the Stiff Squatch. If you'd like to see more content just like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's start off with the spec that we get on our Squatch. On test, we have the Pro 200 model, which is the most expensive bike in the range. As such, it gets a RockShox Pike Ultimate Fork, a SRAM GX 12-speed group set with a 52-tooth cog at the back, and then a pair of SRAM G2 brakes, and there's four-pot calipers at both ends. Then the bike rolls on a pair of WTB KOM rims, and those are laced to Hope Pro 4 hubs. Then they're wrapped with the Maxxis DHF at the front, and that gets an XO casing. At the rear, there's a Maxxis Recon, and that gets an XO Plus casing. Both of those come in 2.6 inch widths. Then there's a KS Lev Integra dropper post with 200mm travel, and there's a really nice Berg Tech cockpit. If a 200mm dropper post is a bit too tall for you, then there's the Pro 175 model. Of course, that comes with the 175mm dropper and everything else that you find on the Pro 200 model. Both of those bikes will set you back £2,500. But it's not all about the Pro models with the Squatch. It also comes in cheaper AM build, which will set you back £1,900. And if you'd like to build a Squatch from scratch, you can get a frame only for just £600. And on the subject of the frame, it comes with a handful of neat features. It gets external routing for the brakes and internal for the dropper post. And then there's bosses for a bottle cage and a threaded bottom bracket. Another really neat feature is that it gets an anti-rust treatment both inside and out before painting. So that means it should be properly sorted for those wintry conditions. The frame then gets overlies seat stays and an overlies top tube. Stiff has done this to introduce vertical compliance to the ride without sacrificing lateral stiffness. Perhaps a standout feature on the frame is its very, very steep seat tube angle. Stiff has taken its 78 degree measurement with a 200 mm dropper post at full extension. That means Unless you ride with a longer dropper post or have really long legs, 78 degrees is the slackest this seat tube will ever get. That also means that as you drop the saddle, the seat tube effectively gets steeper. And that should mean an even comfier ride for shorter riders, says Stiff. That's not all the cool stuff that you find on the Squatch. There's also the brand's 12 board chainstay bridge. That allows for a super short 430 mm chainstay with clearance for up to a 2.6 inch tire then the space for a 34 tooth chain ring. So that's what you get for your two and a half grand. Let's move on to how the bike rides. Stiff says that the Squatch is designed to eke out as much distance as possible, so it's been built to be a solid climber. And that, I can confidently say, it is. The 78 degree seat tube angle places weight directly over the bottom bracket. So when the gradient pitches into a climb, it becomes a really comfortable place to be and offers a truly efficient pedaling position. But that does come with a trade-off. Over flat trails, the Squatch just doesn't feel as comfortable. That's because that steep seat tube angle shifts weight more forwards on the bike than what you would get on a more conservative shaped bike. So it makes it much more difficult to pop the front wheel over trail obstacles when seated. That more forwards weight orientation also made me feel quite perched on top of the bike when faced with a rock garden or a bunch of roots. I felt as if I had to drop the saddle and shift my weight backwards a little bit before piling into them. But that's not to say that flat trails aren't within this bike's capabilities. That 480mm reach gives plenty of space to move around and it's really snappy on the pedals. Even though the Squatch is a long bike with its 1238mm wheelbase, it's still a lively and flickable ride thanks to that 430mm chainstay. Because of the 293mm bottom bracket paired with the bike's length, this bike is super stable in the corners, but it does take a little bit more effort to tip it in. If you're a fan of long bikes, you'll be used to this already, but if you've not piloted anything this long before, it will take a little bit of learning. But it must be said that the Squatch just isn't made for flat trails. Point it downhill and it completely comes to life. It's super composed and that's with some help from those overlay seat stays. They add a small but noticeable level of compliance, which dulls down trail chatter when both seated and in the attack position. Many will say that 130mm of travel on an aggressive bike like this isn't an awful lot, and you would be right, but it actually comes with a very smart choice from Stiff. 
On hardtails with longer travel forks, the geometries can be altered quite a lot as the fork moves through its travel. And that results in a bike that pitches way over the front end over steep stuff, and it sometimes results in, in a more imbalanced ride. That is still something that happens on the Squash, but because of its limited travel and the fork's progressive setup, it's just not as much of an issue. The Pike Ultimate R test bike comes with two bottomless tokens already installed, and that's resulted in the fork that tracks the ground really nicely, but it also ramps up quite a lot in its mid-stroke. That's great because on steep trails, it props the front end up really nicely and it leaves you with a bit of travel to play with for when things get proper rowdy. On the subject of the front end, this bike gets that 480mm reach with that 64 degree head tube angle, and that makes for a ride that's really confident on the downs. When things really get going, the Squatch is nice and stable and there's plenty of room to move around, which makes light work of sudden and steep rolls. That front end also makes for an excellent safety blanket on consistently steep trails where predictability and control is key. That reach isn't the only thing making the Squatch a really roomy bike. It also comes built with a 450mm seat tube, and that's short enough for me to get the saddle well out of the way, offering loads of room over the back of the bike, and that makes the Squatch an even comfier descender. Even with that really short seat tube, that 200mm dropper is a bit too tall for me. My inseam is 78cm, I've not been able to make full use of that dropper post extension. If you've got short legs like me, it's well worth having a look at the Pro 175 model. While there's definitely not a lot to complain about the Squatch's spec, that Maxxis Recon at the rear is definitely an interesting choice. It's surprising to see such a low profile tyre on such an aggressive bike, but it does fit with the Squatch's it'll get you to the top of the hill quickly mentality. While it does roll really nicely, it doesn't provide much grip under braking and it's quickly overwhelmed in the wet. It is really good fun sliding into switchbacks, but for most of my test period I've swapped it for a Maxxis Deceptor which gave me much more grip in all conditions while it still rolled really really nicely. So we can conclude that the Squatch is a bit of a weapon. But with its hefty 2.5k price tag, how does it stack up in terms of value for money? Without a doubt, £2,500 is a lot of money to drop on a hardtail. But the Stiff Squatch actually proves to be pretty good value. That doesn't mean that the Squatch doesn't come without competition. There's the Wrangley Blue Pig Race, which is £200 cheaper, and the Ribble HT275 Pro, which is £300 cheaper. But neither of those bikes come with quite impressive a build kit or quite as wild a geometry as the Squatch. At the other end of the scale, there's a Pipe Dream Moxie, and that's right in the Squatch's firing line. It gets a very similar geometry with a 77.53 seat tube angle, but it will set you back £2,900. I say that Squatch is good value for money because it comes with a really solid build kit. It gets that RockShox Pike Ultimate Fork and the Hope Pro 4 hubs which are easily serviceable. Then there's that really nice BergTech finishing kit. But it's also worth remembering that there aren't many bikes on the market that are shaped quite like the Squatch, so that's also worth factoring into the price. If £2,500 is a bit too steep for you, do remember that there's that AM build that's £1,900, but there's also a frame only option for £600. That means that if you're clever with the kit that you put on it, or if you go second hand, you might even be able to save some money. And that's it for the Stiff Squatch. For a more detailed look at this bike, head on over to www.off.road.cc. But don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this, plus reviews on bikes such as the new Nukeproof Giga and the Canyon Spectral 29 CF8. Thanks very much for watching.